Hi again, this is David at Anarchapoco 2020 with Patriots Lament Radio. And right now we have Amin and Matt from Bitopia. And they are going to tell you what Bitopia is all about and uh, why you should get excited about it. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks for having us on the show. Yeah, so we're, we're at Anarchapoco. We've been uh, presenting our project for the past uh, couple of days just to get a people an understanding of what we're doing. We also held a workshop here. Uh, so to just break it down, uh, you know, for those of you who may not know, Bitcoin uh, took what was the financial system as a centralized organization and decentralized the concept of money production and ownership and made it so that the average person can have a Swiss bank account in their pocket. Uh, thanks to Obama for that uh, analogy. So the interesting thing is that once you do that, you start introducing new thoughts into people's mind. Like what if we applied the same model to other parts of our industries and sectors? And it becomes really interesting. And centralization, while it has its advantages, it has also huge disadvantages. So for example, you know, we have all these fraud and hacks and people's information being leaked. And you know, a lot of these issues are caused by centralization. Centralization just means, for those of you who don't know, uh, on an organization that has a owner. So for example, Google, you register it in a jurisdiction, it has CEOs, it has like board members, it has uh, investors, it has people who dictate how things should be. Uh, centralized organizations are usually closed in that decisions are not transparent, you don't know who's making them, you don't know how they were applied, how funds were spent. So we have a lot of you know, room for improvement. And Bitcoin pretty much turned an entire industry into a USB stick. You know, instead of having these huge buildings everywhere, or banks, 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 uh, it turned it into a USB stick. And that's the power of these technologies. It's like shrinking these huge, huge organizations into something that is a piece of technology or software that you just download. You, you no longer need these uh, physical locations. And uh, it's exciting to see. And yeah, it's not fully ready for everyone to use, and I'm not gonna sell the dream to everyone. Though, as a person that has lived on Bitcoin for seven years, so, you know, I haven't used bank accounts, very rarely, um, but all my salary has been in Bitcoin. So that has challenged me to figure out how to pay my bills, how to survive, how to, how to shop and how to get around. So I lived in the Netherlands for some time. I lived in Germany. I lived in Cyprus. I've had to travel while doing this. And all of it comes with its challenges, though these challenges have given me immense amount of knowledge that uh, you know, has allowed kind of collaboration between me and Matt. He came to uh, the workshop. We met in Oaxaca, which is a city and a state in Mexico. Uh, but in the city of uh, Oaxaca we met, he came to my Bitcoin and uh, blockchain decentralization workshop and we collaborated and through this collaboration of telling him how Bitcoin works, how decentralized technologies work, uh, we kind of you know, sat down and we said what if we offer a, a educational class for people to learn Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and this eventually manifested into something much greater uh, which is a decentralized autonomous university. Uh, and maybe Matt can go a bit into that and explain a bit more about that part. Yeah, when, when I first started getting involved with uh, this project with Amin, he started introducing the concept of a decentralized autonomous organization to me. And I, I come from an investment banking background where we would spend months, sometimes years, setting up public companies to have shareholders, have voting rights, have the ability of passing profits onto their investors. All of these mechanisms of action took a really long time to set up because of centralization and interfacing through the SEC. And when I learned about DAOs and the capacity to create on blockchain an entity that could essentially do the same stuff that a public company could do, uh, except they're doing it transparently, they're doing it securely on blockchain. Um, that really got my wheels turning and so as we were developing this project we said how can we apply this technology to change the world and we started looking at the problems that exist uh, across the world whether it's uh, human impact on climate change or uh, corporations being involved in governance you know these are problems that if if we had a better education system a better way of transferring knowledge across a population, we'd be better equipped to start solving these global problems. And so we started applying DAOs to education 
and we came up with this concept of a decentralized autonomous university, which is a change to the incentive structure of the current education system, and it incentivizes the transfer of knowledge instead of the control of knowledge. A centralized university structure is incentivized to create the institution, to hire the professors, to set a curriculum, and then market to students to come in and buy tuition, buy the education, and then end up in debt. That's an incentive structure that's wrong. It, it incentivizes uh, the monetization of knowledge by keeping it closed, and we want to open that up. And so that's what that's what we started with, with Bitopia, with this concept of a decentralized autonomous university. Okay. Where are you guys... Where are you guys at with that project now? And I'll, I'll leave it there and then I have a follow up. Sure, yeah. sure. Uh, so the model is to take the, you know, what Bitcoin did to finance, we want to do to the education industry. We want to make it so curriculums are open source. We want to make it so students and peers and contributors are rewarded for their time. We want to make sure that the top students walk away not with debt, but with basic income. So the tuitions that come in through for the applications of the course actually go to reward the top students. And we believe this model rewards intelligence, it, remo it rewards knowledge and the transfer of it and those who excel. If people don't have money to apply for the course, they can contribute by donating knowledge. Um, they can contribute by uh, you know, other means and translations and other, other, other things. So where are we with it? So I've been doing workshops and talks for seven years on cryptocurrencies, on educating people with decentralized tools. Uh, so I definitely have that background. Matt definitely has that background with online education, other forms of education, and knowledge of the uh, industry. So what we did is that we first wanted to do a proof of concept to make sure that this need is right. So you know, put it into paper, put it into a physical format that people can interact with. Uh, so what we did is that we trialed it out. So we did uh, one workshop in uh, Oaxaca, we did one in San Cristobal, which is a city in Chiapas, and we did data analysis. We were trying to categorize the feedback from people to see why after 10 years of Bitcoin being out, no one's using it, what, what, what scares them? What fears do they have? What, what's happening? What can we do better as educators to relieve people of this stress and the worry and the confusion and you know, all this fear that's been projected onto uh, you know, via mainstream news or whatever else it is to just get people really scared about it mm -hmm. and minimize its real potential. So the feedback we got uh, after doing like data analysis on it, we came to the conclusion that education and lack of knowledge was the prime reason as to why people did not uh, interact with such technologies. Education about how crypto works, how you use it, what yeah, it is. Okay. absolutely. Yeah. So I can speak from personal experience. For example, when I moved to the Netherlands, recycling is on another level there. In Australia, everyone uses plastic bags. It was very common. I entered the country, suddenly I was ostracized for wanting to use plastic bags. And you know, you have to pay for it. It's just a completely different system. Through education, I came to understand the importance of this. So education can be applied to so many issues in our world. You know, we, we don't need heroes. We don't need gurus. The average person has the ability to learn how to go through their life in a very uh, efficient, in a very sustainable manner. It's just I don't, for example, have a lot of knowledge on permaculture, though if I knew it, perhaps I would grow a bit more and look after myself a bit more and do some things differently. Mm -hmm. You know, It would at least give me the choice. It's not that people People don't want it it's just they don't know how to do it and this can be applied to so many of our global mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. um, and I think it's time that we opened up our knowledge and our field of knowledge and we shared what we believe are ways that people can improve their lives interact with technology or, or, or the environment or earth or uh, knowledge in terms of industries or whatever it is if people had more access to this just the same as Bitcoin is trying to open up access to money make it more inclusive so you, you know you don't Bitcoin is not made by a state or nation state, so it means that anyone can access it. Anyone can innovate without permission. Anyone can uh, be included. You know, it doesn't ask you, are you a human? It doesn't, that question isn't even asked, right, right. let alone, you know, do you need an account? So taking that same model and you apply it to education, we want to make sure that curriculums can be open source. Anyone can contribute to it. And, uh, so that's where we're at. So we have launched it, we have done some preliminary work to make sure we're on the right path. 
we have the right partnerships in place to offer support for what we're doing. Uh, we're in contact with oracles and oracles would be people that review our curriculums and we need these kind of uh, oracles for various industries and uh, we've had great uh, interest uh, displayed to us at this event by people wanting to host their course on our platform or contribute by means of knowledge or uh, interested to just take the curriculum itself like I had a person yesterday come up to me and say I like your curriculum do you mind if I replicate it modify it a bit and use it to educate people in my own city I go it's open source it's on the creative commons which means just let the people know that you got it from us that's all you have to do um, so that's where we're at in like a so, so does this so I'm familiar with you know there's Wikipedia everybody knows about Wikipedia and then I'm familiar with the Khan Academy as well and then you know there's people who educate off of videos they see on YouTube or there's um, instructables.com you know and there's all these maker spaces and stuff like that uh, when I think of education I think of something like that what does your um, distributed university look like with regards to those structures like let's say I'm a I'm a parent who's unschooling a, a kid okay I got a kid who's in fourth grade and they need to learn some fourth grade stuff there's some vocabulary and math and like and subjects they're interested in you know they're it's kind of self-directed how do they use your organization or if it's a secondary student how do they use your organization to access information provide payment or exchange for that information how does that work sure so the platforms that you mentioned have done a great job and I do want to give them the credit they deserve. So Khan, Khan Academy is just next level. I love what you know that, that platform has offered to the world education that you can watch and like apply then and there. Uh, wonderful. Though there are no incentive models in this for the creator or for the person uh, attending to learn or accumulate that knowledge. Uh, decentralized organizations change this. So for example, let me give you a small example and we can uh, kind of explore that a bit more thoroughly. So decentralized autonomous organizations are similar to Bitcoin. They do not belong to a jurisdiction. They are inclusive that people can you know, access regardless of your background or nation or whatever else. And uh, accessibility that anyone with an internet connection can just go on, onto it and uh, gain access. Uh, there is no permission required there. So this is what DAOs do. They can be created in a matter of minutes and uh, they are almost impossible to be taken down unless you shut down the internet. So these are the incentives we're working with. Now if we were to apply this, for example, on a larger scale, let's say globally, we have an organization called DAOfest. DAOfest has been doing an amazing job globally to raise awareness about DAOs and uh, they are a byproduct of DAO stack. So this built on top of DAO stack, Ethereum, etc. And uh, DAO first recently put out a report and uh, it was amazing. They had conducted 31 events in 14 countries with a minimal budget of $6,000. 14 total, total 6,000. Okay, for all the events. Yeah, right. 6,250 to be precise. And that's remarkable. Imagine a company wanting to do events in 14 countries with six, I think just one country would be over that limit. Oh, the yeah. hotels, the relocation, the lawyers involved to make sure the you know, legality is in line, the HR department being involved. There's so much things involved. But when you have a decentralized autonomous organization that people from anywhere in the world can contribute to, you change that. So bring it back and let's apply that model to education. YouTube, you have content. It's not standardized in a way where, you know, you have to spend a lot of time figuring out who's saying what. So even with crypto, I have no way of knowing is this video the one I should watch or is that the video I should watch? And there are hundreds of videos. Uh, misinformation then is created. Disinformation. And you have people who, are, who, who just don't have time for this. They get confused and confusion causes fear and fear makes you just want to leave it alone. And uh, so that, ex that incentive model, that open curriculum model, where industry leaders can look at that curriculum and be like, these are standard security parameters, these are standard uh, you know, procedures on how to operate safely within whatever course, these are important. So Khan Academy doesn't offer that. You know, there's nothing that can match what we have designed and put together because this incentivizes knowledge sharing, knowledge contribution, um, students attending, and uh, the peers and the collaborators and the teachers being rewarded for it as well. 
Um, so I think it's an exciting model. And for kids that are going to school, let's say two or three years old, parents can see the curriculum. They can see what's being taught to their kids. It's all there. Um, they can suggest changes. They can uh, kind of start a dialogue with industry leaders and be like, this is what's being taught to my kid. Can you look over it? What does is, what is the interface look like? Sure. So the interface, uh, you know, we're doing these workshops to collect information, make sure it's done collecting, uh, it's done correctly. The interface hasn't, like, we, we don't have it uh, online until April this year. So okay. that's the first time people can do. You can pre-enroll for our course on bitopia.org. Um, you'll see a button that says pre-enrollment. And uh, the course will be $14.99. And uh, we're offering the first 100 students who get evaluated this course for 100 bucks. The interface will be on, on, the, you know, on the website. You'll attend the course. It will give you homework. Uh, we will go through the different modules. We have a group community and chat where students can go and ask questions. They can interact with the students, uh, with the teachers directly. Uh, we have partners they can access and learn about you know, various things. So it's the complete package. So it's not like in you know, a Khan Academy, we don't have a group where we can go and ask questions. YouTube, I will have to leave a comment. Hope I don't get trolled by some you know, people. Uh, it's not a direct communication. I don't feel a part of the course. Okay. So we offer that and people can come in and do that. And then at the end of it, we will do a, an examination, which will be via video to make sure people can't cheat and make sure they've understood the curriculum. And we reward them for that. And that reward proof of knowledge, uh, which will be tokenized, they can then use to attend other courses. Okay, so the, so the equivalent of a degree is built into your blockchain. Exactly. So okay. they'll get their certification, proof of knowledge, which, which shows solves, that. solves another problem with education, which is degree fraud. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. So that's why we have the video call there to do the examination, to make sure people can't cheat. Uh, we make sure they go through the criteria of the cr uh, curriculum and we do all of that. Uh, maybe Matt can add a bit more to this topic or just in general on how we're trying to... Uh, sure. Just, just for background, you know, most of our listeners in Fairbanks are, are AM radio people. You know, they're not super up on technology. So, you know, wh when, when describing like how you interface with this, you know, it's like, what do I do? I turn my computer on, and then what do I do to access a distributed online university? How do I use it? You know? In the grand scheme of the user experience, it's going to be similar to any online course structure, whereas uh, videos are consumed within a browser window, where homework assignments are assigned through that window through a user account, where they're submitting their homework or something we call proof of, a, proof of knowledge. Uh, gets submitted and reviewed by the professor, very similar to a traditional education environment. It's just that the infrastructure that's powering that is set up on decentralized autonomous organizations, DAOs, and set up on blockchain and using other types of technology that's allowing us to realize cost savings through, through decentralization. So, like, this would include, like, curriculum would be protected through some sort of blockchain technology where the curriculum right. couldn't be altered without authentication. Right, right. right. And, then, and then the same with your grades or your, your scores, you know, what you would pass, this would be stored in that as well. Right. And then you'd have, you're talking about these oracles, so this is like, these would be like Wikipedia editors, sort of. So sort of, This is your review yeah. process to see what information gets to enter. Enter the system. Okay. Exactly. Okay. I understand. You said it right. Yep. Um, we've actually thought about the fact that technology is a limitation and accessibility is very important to us and inclusivity also. So because of the fact that our, crit our curriculum is open source, it means that anyone in the world can translate it. So we can have event triggered uh, courses. For example, if something happens in Iran, we can design a course for people in Iran to access in the times of not having, uh, for example, uh, going through a recession. So we can do specific courses on how to survive what they're literally going through. Okay. And uh, at the same time, if they don't have access to the internet, we've thought about this. How do we do that? So we can have USB-based um, access to these criteria. So in a country like Iran, where internet got shut down, in Sudan, social media channels got shut down, and in Egypt in 2011, internet got shut down similarly. So. We need to have ways on how do we reach people in such conditions. That's why we have USB sharing, APK files they can download onto their phone. And we can have literal PDF downloads. So downloaded, you can host workshops or classes in the traditional manner of pen and paper. And then once you're done the pen and paper, come onto our online course and submit your, uh, submit your results and we can update the students that way. So you can guys, you know, 
technol without technology all the way technological uh, sure that you can move the you can do the sneaker net thing if the yeah, internet's down yeah exactly yeah. and okay. you can do it in places that don't have internet or computers like pen and paper that's, right you know and still allow people to have that connection and that platform that's very cool that's very cool one thing in the i i'm not super up on crypto you know i knew about a little bit of it when it was launched. We talked about it on our show. None of us were smart enough to buy any back then. Fair enough. Um, but one of the the initial the initial spike was people speculating on the value of it. It wasn't necessarily application based, um, like the technology. Right. Let's use blockchain to make money. Right. And now you guys are part of this. Let's use blockchain to build solutions to problems in the world. Right. Like I come from a. You know, I got involved in 2013. I was driven by ideology. I was driven for the better, betterment of human progress. And because of that, what you're referring to, where people would just like make money on a white paper or just explain what they're doing, and it's, there's no application there. I cringe at that. That that is that is that opposes everything I have learned and my principles within this space. That's why this is the first time I've actually like put myself behind a project and I truly believe in it. And that's why we're doing a proof of concept. We're showing the application. We did a workshop here. We had a good number of attendees come, and you know we're collecting all of this as 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 our case study. So if anyone ever questions, like you know, is it? It's referred to as vaporware, which is when you offer a software when you haven't got the software and you're trying to raise money for it and a lot of times people walk away with not delivering anything that they promised sure. so you know for me it's very important to show that proof of concept and that application need desire and success of that uh, before requesting investment you know that's the way it should be done and we are trying to solve a problem that exists and affects millions uh, of individuals around the world so I think uh, yeah there's no issue there at all there's very, no issue. very cool um, how do people find Bitopia online? Sure. Um, and the three criteria, perhaps, we can discuss uh, what we're looking sure. for. Yeah. Uh, so you can find out more information at bitopia.org. Uh, that's our main website. And from there, you can jump onto our social media and see uh, the offerings for our courses. We've got a course that's going to be launching in the second quarter in April that people can pre-register for. And that's going to be our How to Get a Swiss Bank in Your Pocket course. Um, and we're also calling out for collaborators. We're looking for people who want to support this project, whether it's financially. We have a 501c3 out of Wyoming, and we have uh, um, investment packages available. We're also looking for people who want to collaborate with us, whether it's a brand-to-brand -brand collaboration or helping us get the word out, or coming in and helping us build some of the core pieces of infrastructure and solve the problems that we're solving that come with taking on a challenge this big. And finally, we're looking for people with knowledge, people who have um, a story to tell, knowledge that they want to share with the world and they want to experiment on a new type of platform where students are incentivized in the, the transfer of knowledge instead of just showing up and accumulating debt and knowledge. So uh, that that's kind of what we're putting out there in the world on, on what we're looking for. And in the meantime, our, our international team's continuing to plug away and get this project out the door by the, uh, by the end of the year with a functioning beta. Very cool. Cheers. Yeah, well, Matt. Appreciate it, Dave. Thank you. I mean, yeah, cheers, it's man. been great. Yep. Thanks for coming on. All right. Thank, thank you. Very much. Cheers.